Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Joe. Players prefer to keep track of their higher scores and better equipments in the game. Allowing players to save their game is one of the most essential features in your game. In my previous several episodes, we have talked about how to save and load data by player perhaps, Civilization, JSON, and XML. In this episode, we are taking a look at their advantages and disadvantages. Here are the steps I needed to follow. First, we will review these four methods and talk about how to save and load data by using each method. Second, you will find their disadvantages from step 1 and consider which methods will be the better choice for your game. As always, the link for the project repository is on the description below, so feel free and check them out for yourself. Ok, let's get into it. So just open up Unity and currently we already have something on here. For this project, I create one 2D character control following this episode. There are 5 enemies in our game. On the UI canvas, we use UI images and UI text to display how many coins and diamonds we have. We will save and load our option settings, coins number and diamonds number, player positions, enemies positions and their status. We have created one c -sharp script single class called save. This class are not inherent from mono behavior which not act as a component in our game. Mark as system.serializable, this tells Unity that this class can be serialized, which means you can turn it into a string of bytes and save it into a field on disk. We keep track of game coins number, diamonds number, player positions, several enemies positions and their status. This is our game manager script. We have declared coins variables, diamonds variables and all of the enemies in the script. And set this script as singleton pattern. We expect only one game manager class to be active at any given time in our project. So we can get reference to it with a simple call like this. All of saving and loading functions has been created inside our game manual script. First thing first, let's talk about player preps methods. This is our UI toggle game object. One of the most important property in this UI toggle is here. It's on represents the current toggle switch on from the beginning. Also, we have selected the callback function called BGM toggle button. If the boolean variable is on is equal to be true, which means our music toggle switch on. We use playerpref.setIn to set the value of the preferences identified by key. The key we call BGM. The value we say 1. Otherwise, once its on boolean variable is equal to be false, the value is equal to be 0. Inside the BGM manager function, we use playerpref.getInt methods which return the value corresponding to key in the preference field if it exists. In other words, we use these methods to get access of our music settings by using key name, BGM. We use gameObject.enable to active or inactive one game object. In here, we have declared one audio source component on our UI canvas. If we enter the play mode, we can see that we turn off the music setting first and leave the play mode. Once we play this game again, our music settings is turned off. Unity has saved our settings. Great. We can test again. We set the switch on and play the game. After several seconds, we leave the play mode. This time, our music settings should be true. When we enter the play mode again, the music settings is turned on. You will notice that we use playerpress.setInt to save our music settings and load our option settings by using playerpress.getInt. If you want to save and load other variables by playerpress, we can give each variable one key. Each key will correspond with one unique value to save one variable. For example, we can customize one key called coins. These keys will save our coins number in this game. Once the key exists on the preferences field, we can return the value corresponding to the key in the preferences field. We can run our thing and look at the result. 
we have collected 30 coins and 25 diamonds. Press the save button and continue our game. After several seconds, we have received more resources in our war game. Once we press the load button, we will return to our previous position with 30 coins and 25 demos. Nice! As long as we did not press the save button again, we will always return to this process. For this work, we need to remember each key inside save function. Imagine that if we have one inventory system and there are a bunch of items we have to save, which means we have to remember a bunch of keys name. Player Preps is a special caching system to keep track of simple settings for the player between game sessions. Save game systems by using Player Preps is a bad idea. This should be only used for keeping track of simple things like graphics, option settings, or other basic user relative data. Let's take a look at our second method, serialization, binary formatter. During the saving process, we first create one binary formatter instance. For this work, we need to make sure we have set system.runtime.serialization.formatter.binary namespace. Also, we need to use the field streams class, which means we also need the namespace, system.io. IO means import and output. Serialization is the automatic process of transforming data structures or object states into a format that Unity can store later. In other words, serialization is the conversion of an object into a string of bytes. Objects include any script or fields in Unity. We can store objects into database, memory, and field. We create one save instance with all the data for current sessions into it. This function will assign each game variable's data inside save object. The return type is save object. Then create the data path on computer. Binary formatter serialize the data and write it to disk and close the field stream. Let's do binary formatter dot serialize, which means that we are going to write data to the field. The first parameter is string type variable. The second parameter is an object type. Finally, once we have finished writing data to the field, we want to close it off. So we go fieldstring.close. That's all we need to do for saving function. Inside load by deserialization function, first we have to check whether the field exists or not. We can read from this string by using binary formatter dot deserialize. Now we have to receive one save object, which contains data. We can assign each save variables to our game variables. Since we have many enemies, we used for loop to easily get access of our data. So if I save the script and switch back, now we have 10 coins and diamonds and remember our characters and enemies' positions. Press the save button and resume the game. Even we collect more resources later, once we click the load button, not only player but also enemies' positions will return to their previous condition. If you want to save more elements such like the enemies' health points, you can add more variables inside save class and follow the same steps to make this game completed. In our project, we only focus on the logic for saving and loading games. Now we can find this data field on our project. You will notice that our data has been saved in binary formatter. Let's look at the third method, JSON. JSON is a lightweight format for storing and transporting data. There are two parts that make up JSON, keys and values. Together, they make key value pair. A key is always a string enclosed in quotation marks. A value can be an associative array of values, boolean expressions, integer or float number, string, even object. In saving process, we want to convert the save object into JSON type. Create a save instance with all the data for current session saved into it. Since JSON object itself is represented by a string type, we create one string type variable called JSON string. We use two JSON methods on the JSON utility class. 
the parameter should be our save object. This method returns object's data in JSON format. Then we can create one new string writer. The path we choose to use application.datapath. In loading process, first we have to check whether the JSON data.txt field exists or not. The string reader class can read characters from a string of bytes. Let's create an instance of string reader, and the parameter is the data path. Then we use read to end methods to read the JSON text information directly from the field and return the JSON type. We know that the string type is string type. After that, don't forget to close the current string reader object. We want to convert the JSON string type into the object type. We use from JSON methods on the JSON utility class. The parameter should be the string type. Now we have received one save object which contains data. We can assign each variables to our game variables. Since we have many enemies, we use for loop to easily get access of the data. Go back Unity and test our game. Press the save button when we have 10 coins and 15 demos. Once we press the load button, we can load the data and return to our previous process. Cool. Even we have killed many enemies, once we press the load button again, we still can go back and our enemies still alive. Now there is only one enemy in this level and we press the save button. After clear all of the enemies, we load again and the last enemy will still appear on his previous position. We can find our data by JSON field to check it out. Since JSON is one string type, there is only one line on our editor. For easy to read, I can press enter in necessary space. As we talked about before, there are two parts that make up JSON, keys and values. A key is always a string enclosed in quotation marks. A value can be an associative array of values, boolean expressions, integer or float number, string, even object. Each key match with one group of variables. The last method is XML. We create a new XML document type instance. Then we can create each XML element in our XML document. We first create one XML element called root. Each flowing XML element will be appended to this root for easy control. Then we will append this root XML element to our XML document. Finally, don't forget to save this document on our computer. Inside load function, we can load XML document and get access of each data. We used XML document dot get elements by tag name to search for a list of all elements that match our tag name. We used int.parse methods to convert one string type into integer type. Finally, assign the data to our game variables. If you go back into Unity and run our scene, We have 20 coins and 5 demos, and we have killed one enemy. Save the game and resume. This time, we continue to kill one enemy. Once we press the load button, there are still 4 enemies in this level because Unity has remembered all of the enemy studies. We can test many situations such as we kill all of the enemies. Once we press the load button each time, we will return to the same condition. Super cool. Here is XML data field. You will notice that each tag is corresponding with one XML element in our project. Each XML element has been appended to one XML element variables called root. The root tag called save. 
This is the reason why all of the information has been attached inside the same tag in this field. If you are the first time to learn XML, I highly recommend you to pause this video and familiar with this data structure, or we can call him the format. So let's take a look at their advantages and disadvantages. As we talked about before, if you want to save data by player press, you have to create one key. We use playerpref.getKey methods, which returns the value corresponding to key in the preference field if it exists. If you want to save and load other variables, you have to create another keys and get access of each value. In here, we create coins, diamonds, and many other keys to set the value of the preferences. It's a little hard for us to remember each key. If you have many items and achievements, we have to remember each key. If you cooperate with others in your project and your teammates change the key's name, it will cause some problems. Save game system by using player props is a bad idea. This should only be used for keeping track of simple things like graphics, option settings, or other basic user relative data. Let's talk about the serialization binary formatter. In c -sharp script, there are short codes and easy to operate compared with XML. However, as you can see, it's super hard for us to read the data. No, it's not hard to read. I can't read the data from this view. But for some reason, it's highly security for users to keep their data as well in binary formatter. JSON also contains short codes in our script. It's easier to read than binary formatter. Since JSON is a lightweight format for storing and transporting data, the features are self-describing and easy to understand. The structure is simple and easy to read the data inside the JSON view. However, you will notice that JSON looks like the string type, which means only one line in the data view. For readable, it's not a super choice than XML field. So inside XML field, we can save and load huge amount of information, but we have to set up many XML elements and find their tags repeatedly. There are many lines inside the script, which means there are many tags inside our field. We can open each field and check their size. XML field is bigger than JSON field because there are many tags and repeatable information inside the field. I have made one episode before talk about how to make one level selections in Unity. Inside that episode, I use player press to save each level current stars condition. Once the stars value is bigger than zero, we can unlock next level. For me, I can't prove which method is absolutely right for your game. If you want to save single variables, you can use player press because there is less code to write. If you want to improve the security of the data, perhaps you can consider about binary formatter but I really think other methods also contain security elements in our computer. If you want to save and load a bunch of information, I will recommend you to use XML methods. You can only need to create one XML document and put any information you want inside this XML document. JSON is a lightweight format. It's commonly used to transit data between a survey and web application. So this is honestly just tip of iceberg stuff for how to save and load data by these four methods. So I post some links below for future reading for anyone that's interested. And hopefully you can see a way that will be helpful for you in your project. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, turn off the post notification so you can get a notice every time I upload a new video. Stay tuned for future updates from my channel. There's much more to come. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.